Madam President, I am indeed humbled by this opportunity today and wish to thank the Leader of the Opposition of the St. Lucia Labour Party, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, for the confidence and trust he has placed in me to serve the people of St. Lucia. Madam President, I also wish to thank my parents, David and Ursula, my brothers, Sheldon and Eric, and my partner, Kenson, for supporting my journey, as is evident by their presence here today. I also wish to thank members of the Parliamentary Office for their warm welcome and hospitality thus far, as I have taken up this new role. Madam President, I would also like to take a minute to express my sincere condolences to Senator Thomas on the passing of her son, as she could not be here with us today, and to the families who have lost their loved ones due to the COVID-19 virus. Madam President, this really is a time for every single one of us to reflect on how we have been living, the things we may have done to put others at risk, and decide now that as we move on, we will all play our part to fight this virus because, Madam President, COVID knows no color. Madam President, I wish to express that I am always in support of initiatives that will develop the people of St. Lucia. I believe that it is necessary to strengthen and stimulate our local economy, and I take this opportunity to share my views and concerns on the resolution put before us today where the government aims to borrow US $3.75 million or about 10 million EC to finance the village tourism project. Now, Madam President, I believe that a lot can be done to diversify our tourism product where our people will be the major beneficiaries. But Madam President, as I look at the damage that we have been experiencing in St. Lucia, the damage to the sustainability of our tourism market, I am also very concerned of the timing to borrow such an amount and the actual motivations behind this project at this time where our country is experiencing a crisis, where even the Prime Minister admitted in his recent UN address that small island states like ours are least likely to get debt relief. Yet, we are putting ourselves in more debt without sharing a plan on how we are going to recover. So, Madam President, we were reminded by the leader of the opposition at a recent sitting, the one before, that this village tourism project has been on the table and has been a promise made by the government since 2017, about four years ago. Now, all of a sudden, we are seeing a rush to borrow to implement different projects, rushing of bills, and we are approaching, or rather we are in an election period. So how much will be accomplished or implemented before the next general election? Madam President, a village tourism initiative in a COVID-19 world, it almost seems bizarre when a major part of our target audience will be tourists. How does this really make sense? Where are the tourists and who really will be benefiting from this project? We just cannot guarantee the numbers. And the government spoke of providing assistance to our locals to develop their tourism product. But how really are we going to sustain it? Madam President, many of these vendors and service people, as we know, will need to start all over. The Chamber of Commerce made a statement last month in October that over 30% over of its members would already have to close their business. Now we are approaching the end of November, so you can imagine how many other businesses have had to close. So those who would probably get those assist this assistance would most likely have to start all over. Now the biggest question the government should be answering is how are these businesses going to sustain themselves when it has been predicted that there will not be a quick recovery in the tourism industry worldwide for the next few years. Madam President, this really makes one question the reasoning and trustworthiness of this government who has waited again at the last minute to borrow when all else has failed. DSH, we see the horses have gone home. 
Kabot fiasco, which has again shown our people that foreigners have been prioritized over their needs. It really makes you wonder. And someone met me during the last time that this bill was presented and asked if this is just another election gimmick, where at the dawn of an election, we will see projects happening here and there, which will try to fool the people. Madam President, I don't know, but these are the concerns and thoughts of our voters. Last minute projects, Madam President, and I will tell you what this government has done as it relates to village tourism. This government has killed village tourism for our people. Just like five to stay alive is dead, as the leader of the opposition once stated. Village tourism was killed by this UWP administration, Madam President. Do you remember the Heritage Tourism Project, which was started, initially started by the St. Lucia Labour Party? Roads to the waterfalls, the sky rides in Babuno, ancillary fish fry, that's village tourism. Denry Fish Fiesta, that is also village tourism. All of which provided opportunities for our local vendors to make a living, not just appealing to the foreign market, but also appealing to our local people. The Heritage Tourism Project created opportunities for cultural development locally, something that we are seeing has been lacking for years now. Now, when you go to Denry, all you can see is maybe two or three vendors selling outside of their homes. Village tourism already existed, but it has been killed. And it is a shame that even in the constituency of ancillary, with a sitting parliamentary representative, the ancillary fish fry cannot, still cannot even take off. And I am talking about before COVID. Now, four years later, we're still hearing of village tourism. And we must ask ourselves, why? Why is it coming up year after year after year and at this time? What happened over those four years, Madam President? What happened with the 13 million in 2008 that was borrowed to finance this very same project? In March 2018, the CARICOM Development Fund provided a grant of 324,000 to establish the framework for village tourism. Now tell me, where the money gone? But it's borrow, 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 and we have to ask ourselves, what will this 3.75 million US be used for? Madam President, I really believe, and it's sad to say, that all of this is arbitrary. To try to raise the expectations of our electorate, to make them think that this government is about to do something. False hope and false promises over and over, year after year, that this same village tourism project will be launched. And I recall one of the parliamentary representatives make a comment on the development of a tourism initiative in Forest Chair. And I can tell you, because it is the same thing, we're still waiting on that development because we have been hearing about it. Metale Lakaini a lot sort turning. The same member spoke of building a market in Bexor that will service tourists who come from the north or the south of the island. And as some of you may or may not know, Castri Southeast is the one constituency that you will have to pass through, whether you pass along the west coast or the east coast to get to the north or the south of the island. A market in Bexor, but where are the numbers to sustain this initiative when families are crying because they have lost their jobs, jobs that depended solely on the tourism industry? What really, again, I have to ask, is the reasoning behind borrowing this money at this time? How are we going to sustain those enterprises when spending is now at an all-time low? Madam President, as a young business owner, I can speak firsthand of the effects of COVID-19 and how challenging it has been to sustain. The young people out there will tell you that they are very concerned about the future of their businesses, some of which, again, depended solely on tourism. Spending is not likely to be the same as persons are still recovering from this COVID blow. 
the creatives who depended on the entertainment industry in the hotels. Most of them are young people, small craft vendors, restaurants, and bar owners. They are still suffering. Madam President, we have been suffering, and COVID had, has just magnified what we have been feeling for a very long time. Our people have been begging for a piece of bread that this government should have been working hard to supply, but all we see is resources can continuously being distributed among friends, and the small man cannot eat. Madam President, we need to know how this government is going to rebuild our economy. How are they going to create linkages among our local entrepreneurs through diverse means, rather than solely depending on the tourists to come to St. Lucia? We need to take a look and analyze those niche markets that exist outside of our country, formulate initiatives and services, and think of those export services that will appeal to those markets when there is so much uncertainty as to the forecasting of our tourism numbers where trends show that travel has become less affordable. The spending power of people globally has decreased as some have lost their jobs, and I have said before, some of them have experienced pay cuts. Madam President, we must reimagine how we will thrive, how we will manage this recovery in a way that doesn't just appeal to few, and I say very few, who wish to engage in leisure travel at this moment, but to show people how tourism initiatives can be diversified and economically viable. This government must take time to rethink its position on tourism rather than rushing projects with no plan and no recovery. Now, Madam President, a forecast by McKinsey and Company, a reputable strategic management and consultancy firm that advises corporations and governments worldwide, has predicted that it will take about four to seven years to return to tourism levels similar to what we even experienced in 2019 a once $9 trillion market, and we cannot show our people how we intend to be innovative and diverse in our approach to improve their standard of living. These are the times that we are living in, Madam President, times of fear and uncertainty, and you would realize that even locally, our leisure time, our work time, has moved quickly into virtual worlds, far less for the tourists. Madam President, it just really is confusing to me. And I can only imagine for the people who are tuning in today from their homes, those who stop me when I walk through the city and ask me about the intention of all of this borrowing, when they themselves don't even know how they are going to feed their families. They ask, why isn't this money being invested in our education system, in agriculture? where we can engage in developing certain crops and exports. But tourism is what we know, so we are sticking to that. Madam President, this lack of foresight, lack of diversity, lack of innovation, lack of transparency continues to be brought to light, where we see once again that the government fails year after year to deliver on its promises to our people. This is the time for us to make things better for them. And I appeal for consideration on diversing our efforts and not just putting all of our eggs in one basket. Thank you.